In 1895, the British Royal Geographical Society passed a resolution stating that the Antarctic was the last major target of geographical discoveries which could have scientific, geological, and commercial significance. Thus, the race to reach the South Pole began. The fiercest competition took place between the Englishman Robert Scott and the Norwegian Roald Amundsen. In early 1910, Scott, already on his way, received a telegram warning him that Amundsen was also heading for the South Pole, and not the North Pole as he had previously announced. Scott knew he had to hurry. On the way across the icy continent, Scott left several smaller teams behind at intervals to secure the food reserves. After establishing the last such base, he set off with four men and sledges drawn by 50 dogs to reach the last unconquered spot on Earth. They had to shoot several dogs on the way to eat and feed the remaining dogs. They reached the South Pole on the 17th of January, 1912, only to discover, to their great despair, that Amundsen's team had beaten them to it. The journey back was disheartening and torturous. They ran out of food and showed symptoms of scurvy. Even the weather turned against them. Edgar Evans fell into a crevasse and was badly injured. The unbearable conditions of the return journey drove him mad, and he died a few days later. Lawrence Oates started limping on one leg, so he stayed behind not to delay the team. He dragged himself out of his tent and disappeared in the snow. He was never seen again. Scott noted in his diary that Oates could be an example to every English gentleman. Only three men were left to carry on. The last note in Scott's diary said, It seems a pity, but I do not think I can write more. R. Scott. For God's sake, look after our people. On that night, all three froze to death in their tent. There would have been just 18 kilometers left to the well-equipped base. Many people thought they had been broken mentally by losing the race and had lost the will to stay alive. The victorious Amundsen returned to his ship, the Fram, and wrote the following letter. Your Majesty, allow me to inform you that the Fram expedition successfully arrived at the South Pole on the 14th of December, 1911. We planted the Norwegian flag, and with the gracious approval of Your Majesty, we named the area Håkon the Seventh Plateau. Your loyal subject, Roald Amundsen. Later, Amundsen received much criticism. He was blamed for Scott's death, and it was also claimed that he had only been interested in winning the race, while Scott's team had carried out scientific measurements as well. Perhaps in a twist of fate, a few years later, while on a rescue mission to find a friend who had been lost in the Arctic, his airplane crashed near Norway's Svalbard archipelago. His body has...